let's look at orbits. So we're only going to look at orbits which are circular today. Uh, keep in mind you could do elliptical orbits. If you do that, it gets a little more complicated. Um, so we're going to stick to circular orbits. Um, but let's imagine that we have, say, the moon going around the Earth. Let's draw a picture of that. So clearly the moon going around the Earth, uh, the moon travels in a circular path. Uh, and if it's traveling in a circular path, we know that there has to be a centripetal force. Well, in this situation, the centripetal force acting on the moon is the gravitational force. The gravitational force is the centripetal force. Well, if they're the same thing, we, they should be equal to each other. So let's write that down. The gravitational force is equal to the centripetal force in this situation. Each of those we have an equation for, so let's substitute those equations. So gmm over r squared equals mv squared over r. Well, we can cancel out one of the masses. We can cancel out the mass of the object traveling in a circle. In this case, that's the moon. So we get rid of the mass that's traveling in the circular path. Also, the r in both equations turns out to be the same thing. Now, the r in Newton's universal law, that's technically the distance between the two objects. And the r in centripetal force, that's the radius of the circular path. In this case, they mean the same thing. It's not always going to be true. And there is actually a slight difference between the meaning of those. But numerically, in this situation, they're the same thing. Point is, the equation simplifies, and we can solve for v. v is equal to the square root of gm over r. That is called the orbital speed. That's the orbital speed of an object traveling in a circular path due to gravitational force. So we could put numbers in for the Earth and the Moon. And in this case, that capital M, that is the object that's causing the force on the object traveling in a circle. So that's the mass that's at the center of the orbit. So for the Earth and Moon system, that would be the Earth that's at the center of the circle and r is the radius of the path, which is the same as the distance between the two objects here. Um, we could do the same thing with the Earth and the Sun. Uh, and We could figure out the orbital speed of the Earth as it goes around the Sun, or we could do that for, I don't know, a planet around another star. Um, it works no matter what, as long as you have an object traveling in a circular orbit. Now we can also get a little more fancy. Um, so in orbits, the object is traveling in a circular path. So that means all of those equations and all of that information that we had about circular motion, it applies here. So let's look at an example. Let's think about the Earth going around the sun. The Earth travels in a circular path, or at least we will assume that it travels in a circular path. It's actually a little bit of an ellipse. Um, but let's assume it's a circle, um, and let's find the period of the Earth as it goes around the Sun. Now I know you probably can figure out what it should be, but let's do the calculation. Um, and I'll give you some information. I'll give you the mass of the Earth, I'll give you the mass of the Sun, and I'll give you the distance between the Earth and the Sun. So if we do that, let's see. Well, the gravitational force on the Earth as it travels in that circular path is the centripetal force. And we have the gravitational force from Newton's universal law of gravitation. The centripetal force we can write as mv squared over r. However, there's a more useful way to write that. Um, that v squared over r. v squared over r is the acceleration. And we have an equation for the acceleration that incorporates the period. So I'm going to make that substitution. Now we have the centripetal force is equal to m times 4 pi squared r over t squared. Now, gravitational force is the same as the centripetal force. All right, so let's set those two things equal. The mass cancels out. Now remember, that's the mass of the thing traveling in a circle. So that's the mass of the Earth here. That cancels out. And we get that equation. Do a little bit of algebra, or maybe a lot of algebra. 
uh, and we can solve for the period. And actually, on the way there, you see this. This t squared is equal to 4 pi squared r cubed over gm. That right there is Kepler's third law of planetary motion. We're going to kind of skip over it, but just keep in mind, that right there that we just did in like a minute, uh, it took Kepler a very long time to discover that relationship, and we just did it with a couple equations using Newton's universal law of gravitation. Uh, but anyway, let's solve for the period, uh, put in the values that we know, and the period of the Earth around the Sun is 3.17 times 10 to the 7 seconds. And if you convert that to days, turns out, you get 367 days. Which isn't correct. A year should be 365 plus a little bit days. But we made an assumption. Remember back to the beginning. We made an assumption that wasn't totally correct. We assumed that the path of the Earth around the Sun is a perfect circle. And it isn't. Also, there were, you know, we only kept three significant digits, so there was bound to be a little bit of rounding error. Um, but hey, not bad. Not bad.